one. What's up and welcome back to an emergency podcast of Propel's Talk. It's 10.05 in the morning. Kawhi Leonard's out for the basically the playoffs. Chris Paul's in COVID protocol, whatever. And now what we've been hearing, Elliot, and Elliot Clough of Pelicans Plus is on this show. It's an emergency pod, so of course he's on this show. <laughs> Stan Van Gundy is out as head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans one year one year. He lasted one year, Elliot. And we've been saying, listen, we've been catching some flack. Okay. We've been saying that there's been a little disconnect between the players and the coaches. And I don't know if people like Stan Van Gundy and people sing Kumbaya and things like that. Elliot, this, this is a thing now. It's a thing. This is it the is. third coach in three years. Elliot, go ahead. It is. And you know, Justin, I was 100% one of those people saying, okay, everybody calm down. This is ridiculous. And I mean, you, you know, me, Justin, I'm, I'm, I try to be, you know, the, the calm in the storm a little bit. And I mean, I, I think you're with me on this in third, like you said, third coach in three years, Stan Van Gundy got one shortened season. Didn't even really get a practice. I mean, Jackson Hayes and Nikhil Alexander Walker got that development big time. Right. And, right. and we love that. That's huge. But sure he's a teacher who in large part didn't get to teach. And I think that really put that divide between him and the players because he's saying do X, Y, Z, but he can't impart what he wants to impart. And on top of that, I mean, he's an old school guy, right? Like that's just, there's a disconnect there too with modern players and, and older coaches to where you're going to get, um, Sorry, I'm getting a notification. Zion Williamson is on his way to having his third coach. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Will Guillory. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I I it's just it, it blew my mind. Like it it did and it didn't. I'm surprised and I'm not. I, I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does, Elliot. And here's my, listen. I'm not surprised. Okay. Everything in the exit interviews told me everything. The Josh Hart comments, the Brandon Ingram comments, the Eric Bledsoe checking out against the Knicks thing. Uh, you, you could just kind of just sense it, right? And Griffin, listen, I, I've been tough on Griffin too, but I'm giving him his props here because David Griffin made a mistake by hiring Stan Van Gunning. He just did. Okay. It, it didn't work out. And yes, we can make the excuses of, you know, COVID and you didn't have summer league and stuff. That's fine. There was clearly a disconnect between players between coaches and players. David Griffin knows he has to strike now. He made a decision. He's like, Gail, you're gonna have to write another check to another coach, but we have to get the right guy in. And I personally think this is a Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson decision. I think David Griffin and, and Trajan and, and Swin had conversations with their two founda foundational pieces and was like, is this the guy? And I could tell you Brandon Ingram, absolutely not. Like Brandon Ingram despises him. Now Zion, we all know how much of a sweetheart he is. I think they definitely had a say in this. There's no doubt in my mind. So now, you know, with the crazy offseason, I told you this offseason would be crazy because guess what? We still have to make a decision <laughs> on Lonzo Ball, which is not even like, that's like now the back burner, right? Who comes in next? And, and Elliot, I have, we've been, me and Elliot have been, geez, we've been texting nonstop for the past 12 hours. Uh, I have a great list here who I, who I really like, and I'm going to give you two candidates that I really like, Elliot, and one dark horse. I'm going to go with Chauncey Billups, and I'm going to go with Sam Cassell. I think they're two uh, respectable guys in this league that um, obviously won at the highest level. Uh, they're player coaches. Sam Cassell is obviously with the Sixers now. Chauncey's with, um, I, I don't know why I'm blanking. The Clippers, I don't know why I blank that. Uh, there's just so many, so many thoughts going on. I like right. those two. A dark horse for me, Elliot. I'm going to pitch it to you after this. Teaspoon. I don't, I don't know. A lot of players like Teresa Weatherspoon. They've talked highly on Kyra Lewis to Kelly Alexander Walker, Zion Williamson. I mean, you name it. Uh, she could possibly be a dark horse candidate here. Go ahead. Will Guillory just tweeted that he's got sources that she's going to be seriously considered. Really? Um, so... Yeah, Will Guillory of The Athletic, if you're not aware of him, he does great work. Been on my podcast when I was on the last podcast, not Pelicans Plus, but um, I'm, I'm all for Teaspoon based on what I know. Um, as far as X's and O's goes, I mean, she's I, – I don't know to the degree where she's at there comparatively to, you know, the, the Ime Udokas, the Chauncey Billups, the, um, the, the Sam Cassells, but, I mean – 
the the players love her. We've heard nothing but good things. And the one time we get we got to see her in the media availability, she was awesome. She's incredibly articulate, well, uh, I mean, well educated, and. I mean, I, I loved hearing her speak. You know, obviously there's going to be some barriers with her being a woman. So, I mean, it'll be the first head coach that's a woman in the NBA unless Becky Hammond gets hired before her. Um, I think it would make it a bit of a smoother transition uh, as opposed to bringing in somebody new. And if you do bring in somebody new, you got to keep guys like T or women, a woman, Teaspoon on the staff. And then guys, obviously like, um, like Fred Vinson, um, and, and D house, who's been awesome with, with Jackson Hayes as well. Um, I, I don't know if you saw Woj's tweet, Jacques Vaughn, Ime Udoka, Charles Lee, and for God's sake, Jason Kidd are supposedly, yeah. um, the, the coaches that let's see here are expected to circle back among from a year ago. Yeah. We talked about, and we talked about Jason Kidd. I, I just, I don't like him. I don't want him near my franchise, my city, anything like that. Kenny Atkinson was another name. Um, I'm interested to see if his name gets thrown back into the pool. Cause Elliot, what wasn't really, what I thought Griffin did a nice job of last year, but you know, I didn't, uh, we wanted to know is that he didn't, he kept his candidates, his coaching candidates, very hot shush. Right. But Kenny Atkinson was on one of those final cuts. So I wonder if they circle back with him. Um, but I'm all about, like a Sam Cassell, Chauncey Billups, like player coaches, teaspoon, perfect example, right? Everybody wants, like, imagine the intensity, imagine people wanting to play for teaspoon, right? That's the coach I want. Okay. That, yeah. And this is why I couldn't get with Stan Van Gunny is because like, he's just so old school and such a curmudgeon and just so he's so cranky and he's never happy. And there were a lot of reports of saying that he was just kind of an asshole and he just wasn't a likable guy. Okay. You got to have as a coach, this isn't the nineties and early 2000s. You got to have a likable guy. You got to have guys that are going to do everything they can for that coach. And you could tell later on in the year, like they just didn't want to play for Stan Van Gundy. I think in the initial stages of the season, we saw, it was like a reckoning happened where it was like, Holy shit. We have a coach that's going to coach us now let's go. And then it just, it, it was too much. I mean, guys were with their teammates constantly being with and around coaches a lot. And while you can learn, and I mean, it's, it's exactly what you said. Relationships are the foundation of coaching now. Yeah. And I mean, well, here's the thing about that is we've seen Sam Cassell be on Austin rivers podcast, like stuff like that. And that Stan Van Gundy's not going to do that shit with JJ Bredick. If he was <laughs> the coach at that point in time, there's no way in hell. Right. And Chauncey Billups, uh, a member of the media NBA champion, um, very highly regarded throughout the NBA. I'm a little iffy on, on the Kenny Atkinson thing too, because I think if he was going to be hired, it would have been last season because the beginning of the new regime was at that point in time. And I texted you last night. And I said, I don't think it's going to be Atkinson. I don't think it's going to be a Will Weaver type because the Pels have to start winning now. And right. Will Weaver would have to figure out how to be a head coach in the NBA, which is a completely different game than the NBL. And Kenny Atkinson is known for his development purposes. But if he can be brought in as like an associate head coach along with a Chauncey or, or a Sam Cassell, I'm all about that 100%. Same thing for Will Weaver. I love Will Weaver. I think he's an offensive genius. Right. Yes. And I want to get to your point is that like, I think if we go with a teaspoon, right, someone who's never coached at a high level, but you, you're going to have to have a good staff, right? Teaspoon yeah. is going to basically manage personalities, you know, run stuff, but you got to have a staff that like knows yeah. what's going on and things like that. And teaspoon will figure things out. She's smart, intelligent, all that stuff. Players will go to go to war for her. Everyone speaks highly of her. She is, I'm telling you a dark horse candidate. I, I, not even more of a dark horse anymore. Like she might be a serious candidate and listen, if it is teaspoon, I don't really have a problem with it. I kind of love it to be honest with you. It's, it's fresh. It's new. Every single player has spoken highly of her. I, I, I can get with that. Okay. I mean, I, she's in, she's been in the system for a couple of years now. She embraces the city. She's been around Zion. She's mentored Kyra and Nikhil Alexander Walker. Like those, like that's a big deal. So a lot of news happening, a lot of craziness. Um, Elliot, once again, first off, you're a rock star. Uh, thanks for joining me here. I, you just, I, mean, I just called you like 
15 minutes ago, I was like, you got to hop on the pod right now. You're like, yep, let's do it. Um, right. <laughs> and you're in the middle of moving, which is even more impressive. So um, that's Elliot Clough of Pelicans Plus. Make sure you go follow him. He's streaming on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Music, all that different kind of stuff. Does a great job, brings on great guests. Are you bringing on Schmidt today, tomorrow? Is that, is that a thing? Yep. Yep. Today uh, we're recording at, yes, we're recording at three 30. So I'll put out a tweet seeing if anybody has any questions too. Um, he, he was the first one who told me about this. Obviously there was a little bit of cryptic tweeting going on last night that I caught and tweeted out, but Shamit and I are, are this is going to be a long form conversation. Obviously this was sort of emergency. Gotta, gotta get one in, but Shamit and I are hopefully going to be able to talk for, for about an hour. Yeah, I'm excited. So make sure y'all tune in. Um, that'll be released tonight or tomorrow, Elliot. That's got to be tonight, right? <laughs> yeah. So make sure you tune in there. Um, we'll make sure to retweet that link. Uh, we've had some fan questions, but I think we've kind of hit on them. They, they're they really interested in Teaspoon. Um, James Six Killer would said, would love to hear your takes on Teaspoon or potentially Becky Hammond from the Spurs, who I think are both great candidates. Uh, Cooper Swift with the what the hell with emojis. Uh, Brandon Bones Ingram says, bring in Jerry Stackhouse. That's another name we mentioned last year. Yes. Um, Jerry Stackhouse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, One thing to say about that, if you've, if you've got the time, Justin, yeah. is if you haven't read Chris Connor's article from the Bird Rights, I, I'm not one to promote. I mean, we're not, even, uh, we're not even opponents or whatever. Chris is an awesome guy. He's been on my pod a few times. This dude wrote an article about Jerry Stackhouse being the next coach of the Pelicans last year. I think it's just as applicable. Chris, this article blew the frick up for good reason. Chris did his research. He was all about it. I would check out that article if you're listening to this pod right now. And because he's been an NBA player and he won a G League championship and he's a mentor of Brandon Ingram, they're from the same town in North Carolina, that would be such a freaking perfect fit. And he's coming out of college where he's, I mean, he's done the recruiting and everything like that. And you take that weight off of him and he knows how to build these relationships. Ah, it's just damn near the perfect hire. I'm still all about it. I doubt it happens, but I'd be all for it. 100%. Yeah, for sure. And I think, listen, I want to give, before getting off this show, I want to give major props to get to David Griffin. I really do. I, I haven't agreed with all of his moves and, and things like that, but that, that's the type of person I am. Like when you make a bold move, for your franchise, like a winning move. This is a winning move. He knew, he knew it wasn't going to work. And this is not an easy decision. He's going to get backlash for it. No doubt about it. But this is a big move for David Griffin. This shows me he's not messing around this year. He's ready to get to work. He wants to build a winner. He messed up. Okay. Stan Van Gunny was a terrible hire. It's okay. He got off of it. Gail Benson opened up the checkbook. Now we go. Now we got to build, get shooters, Please, God, get shooters, get rid of Eric Bledsoe to the moon, get either Teaspoon, <laughs> Chauncey Phillips, Sam Cassell, whoever, get somebody that can be relatable to this generation, and let's move. Um, once again, Elliot Clough, thanks so much for joining us. I cannot wait to listen to that podcast tonight. Once again, Elliot Clough of Pelicans Plus. Make sure you go follow him. My name's Justin Napoli. This emergency podcast was sponsored by Company Burger. Make sure you go check them out at 4600 Ferret Street. We'll be live on Twitter all day, Instagram. This is going up on YouTube. Thanks again for supporting our podcast and go pal.